So inspiration is kind of the third aspect. Um, so in terms of looking at inspiration, we look at anterior ribs or posterior ribs. And these numbers are, you count from the top to the um, rib that is intersecting the diaphragm at the mid-clavicular line. So this is the mid-clavicular line here, and this is the diaphragm. So this is where you're counting to. And I always used to find it quite difficult um, figuring out which rib is posterior and which rib is anterior. And on a PA film, the posterior ribs um, will be more prominent. But ideally, you will be using the anterior ribs because they're, it's to do with them being close to the diaphragm, so they're a more reliable measure of adequate inspiration because posterior ribs vary a bit more. Um, so if we're looking at the anterior ribs, we count one, <coughs> two, three, four, five, six. Everyone with me? So they, they are a little bit harder to see, and in things, in conditions where the bone density isn't quite as good, um, they're even harder to see. So something like osteopenia, osteoporosis, it gets quite difficult. Um, and this again just illustrates exactly that. So this is a film of a patient with osteoporosis and you can barely see the anterior ribs. So you can see the posterior ribs, but the anterior ribs, you can, you can just about see the second one there, but they're quite difficult. Sorry, the first one. So the consequences of poor inspiration again are quite significant. So because everything collapses, you don't get any differentiation. So all of the lung comes down and it all becomes quite difficult for the rays to pass through, so it all becomes quite white. And the heart appears a lot bigger. And the reason for that is when you collapse the lungs, um, you increase the pulmonary pressure, so the heart doesn't beat out as much blood from the right ventricle. And because we're looking at the right ventricle, that ends up looking quite a bit bigger. Um, and you'll also get a raised diaphragm because obviously the diaphragm relaxes and comes up. Um, when you're in expiration. Um, the trachea also deviates to the right, and that's a normal thing. Um, so the trachea normally travels to the right a little bit anyway, um, but it'll deviate even more to the right when the lungs collapsed. So this is a poorly inspired film. Um, so you can only actually see three ribs here, um, measured to the mid clavicular line. You can't really see the heart. It looks all looks quite congested, so it all looks like there's kind of bits of white coming up here, and usually you take that to mean fluid, so it's something like heart failure. Um, the heart looks quite big, um, and you can see what looks like maybe consolidation. But actually, when you do a proper film on the same patient, um, and it's a PA film as well, um, you can see there's no consolidation, um, the heart's completely fine, um, and you're getting a good amount of ribs. Does anyone have any idea what this might show? Yeah, fantastic. So, COPD. Has anyone seen a patient with COPD? People who've had clinical years yet? Have you, you seen? So, the reason people with COPD have so much difficulty isn't because they can't breathe in, it's because they can't breathe out. So, their lungs are hyper expanded, and that's what you call emphysema. Um, and because of that, and it's chronic, they end up getting really flattened diaphragms on chest x-ray, and this is quite marked. If you ever see a patient with COPD and you see their x-ray, it will be like this. Um, so you can usually expect to see more than seven anterior ribs.